We are joined by Kevin Cronin, the Kingdom uh, Warrior, and he, of course, uh, is hoping to make all his dreams, I suppose, come true, as he is the professional boxer out of Kerry at the moment, and he is heading up to Belfast in a couple of weeks' time, where he's hoping to make all his rocky dreams come true in, in one belt. Kevin, fair play, thanks for joining us this evening. It's really cold outside, uh, is the main thing. But, um, Kevin, how excited are you about this fight? I don't know. Great to be here. Thanks for having me. Um, yeah, very excited. Um, but look, there's not there's not money yet, you know. But um, so we won't be celebrating anything just yet. Absolutely. But, um, yeah, definitely. Very excited. Up for it and can't wait. Yeah, it's the light heavyweight Celtic title. I mean, uh, put that into context for listeners. What's that build? What what's that weight? What's that? What's yeah, that? light heavyweight. Um, it's the weight I, I moved down to at the end of my amateur career. Um, it's actually lighter than that in the professionals. But um, yeah, I was making a move out of that weight class when Daffer came in. But um. The Celtic titles, the Celtic regions, um, I'm not certain of them. Is it Wales, England, mm-hmm. France, Spain, Ireland, Northern Ireland, um, in, in Scotland, in, in places. There's plenty of so good boxers in it anyway. Yeah, yeah, but I'm going to be, oh yeah, it's, look, it's a, a, wicked, a wicked category. Um, luckily enough, we've got a, a hell of a fight ahead of us, you know. Um, we didn't want we didn't want to be getting a ma- this after this match for it either. Yeah. So we're actually, I'm fighting the, the super middleweight Celtic champion. He went over and he took on an undefeated Scottish um, fella in Bim McGivern just a couple of months ago and defeated him made made easy work of it really you know so um, I was meant to be fighting Robbie Burke for this title a couple of months back and uh, a few things happened that got pulled from under our feet and this this opportunity came up and you know the the reward way way outweighs the, the risk so um, yeah for Boxing is that kind of sport, isn't it? Particularly professional. I mean, you, you you're traveling one path, and next thing that the, there's a brick wall put in front of you. But I mean, you either kind of go through it or around it, or but you never kind of really go back from it in 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 that sense. And and you face many challenges. Um, talk to us about amateur first, and and and, and jumping up to professional, and, and we'll get to the fight maybe later in the conversation. But I mean, what drew you to the sport of boxing the first day, Kevin? Oh, it was my brother. My brother used to box competitively when, when we were younger. I was about, I think he was 11. I was I was about 10, so I was always around the boxing gym and he's competitive for a couple of years. So I was always in there, not competing, but training and sparring and just doing everything better competing, really. Um, my brother left the sport a couple of years later. I left it for a few years and I was just more into football. You know, I was big into football that time. Um, but, you know, it's... It, you, you, you I, were, I ended uh, up you know, you the, the, road, mil- the road came back to boxing you know. <laughs> you were the Milltown centre back for a while were you? <laughs> I was yeah, yeah. <laughs> come here the road went back to boxing um, and I suppose it has guys we talked to a lot of uh, high achievers about their sports and the whole lot and it's the love that brings you back to it is it or, or is it in boxing it's a sense that you know I can achieve more I'm good at this this is my sport I tried X and Y for a while but I really feel at home and is, is that what brought you back? I don't know what brought me back there for my sins you know <laughs> um, but no yeah I, I, I really got back to it just to lose a bit of weight but you know what I, did, I didn't realise how much I I really liked that sport until I went back to it you know um, like when as I say when my brother was competing I was in the gym it's, I wasn't competing so I couldn't exactly find a love for it you know yeah. but, um, you, you, you're watching your brother I suppose in the ring You, you, you like you said you're doing your bit of sparring and your, your weights or whatever you're, you're doing around the place watching him Um your first fight when you when you went in, I mean, you obviously said, you know, look, I I, I want to, to do my best at this sport. Your, your whole lot, the gloves are put on. Off you go into the ring. What's it like there for the first time? Uh, do you know, it's it's one of, the, one of the only fights, well, not the only fights from my amateur career, but it's one of the fights from my amateur career that stands out that I remember so clearly. Like the fights, 10 or 20 fights that followed that. I, I don't have much recollection of them, you know, but I do remember that one and I remember it was just... It was torture in there. I was super heavyweight at the time. I was weighing 115 kgs fighting big. big, big fellas. I remember my first fight was actually against a guy from um, a guy from Tralee. Um, he was a he was a foreign boxer, but he was boxing out of Tralee. And jeez, uh, it was, uh, it was <laughs> shouldn't <laughs> it, have been at that weight class. It, it was a long few minutes, was it? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was what, definitely a long few minutes. What, what makes it long when, when you're inside there? Then is it the punches? Is it the time? Like everything that's being landed is is heavy. I'd imagine. I mean, it's all taken a bit out of you. What, what's the, the the part of it that makes it hard? Uh, you know, it's just mentally draining. Even having someone in front of you, you know, it's punching you back, and you got to make the right moves because you make the wrong move. You know, it, it it could be game over. Um, but yeah, it's, it's a big, big mental part to boxing, you know. And um, I don't think people realise it until they get in there. And some don't even realise that that's what it is, you know, because people just burn out so fast. But they're burning out because of what's in front of them, and it's uh, 
that's why experience helps big time in there you know you're able to slow things down and settle into the fight and at the minute now I find myself very very experienced in there you know I've had countless countless amateur fights you know and now I've had um but if I had five pro fights and yeah. which my amateur career is going to help big time and yeah. as much as I say I shouldn't have been at that weight it's going to help me in this fight because this guy is was he 6'5 yeah. Jamie like that's that's unheard of down at this weight but it wasn't unheard of at super heavyweight so I've I've fought these bigger guys and look hopefully on the night yeah. it's, it's, it's prepared the road for you I suppose I, I suppose by excellent or design it's prepared that road come here you you, you, you take the amateur you quite successful as amateur as well in fairs and then you decide you know, I, I'm going to give pro a go. Um, was that a big decision to make at the time, or, or was it kind of just the next level? Uh, it wasn't. You know, it wasn't. A, it wasn't a huge decision, to be honest with you. It was. Um, it was. It was death, or I was gone from the sport. I probably would have went back playing football for a couple of years, but you know, I don't think I would have ever found the love for football as much as I do love watching it. I don't think I would have found the love for playing football as what I have for boxing. Um, but it was look, it was just time and, and it was luck that I was over in London competing and it was the right time, right place. Uh, I beat um I beat uh, was a central area champion in the quarter final, my first fight light heavyweight, um beat the English bloke. Uh, went down to fight a guy the next day, had a cracking fight, just just was just edged on the scorecard. And um I was kinda you know, I was done with the sport after that. I was just went through so much heartache, you know, with decisions and even broken bones and everything. I broke my hand twice working up to the wow. to that competition as well. That saw me over other competitions, but uh, as I say, right time, right place. There was a boxing promoter in Linner Gun and ringside watching the fight, and um, yeah, look, the rest is the rest is history. So you put on the pad and off you went, uh, and here you are. I mean, you you're undefeated. Uh, you fought everything ahead of you and before you that that, that you can fight. Um, but I dare say that you're you're kind of being. The, the comfort zone is out, out of play at this stage I mean when, when you're fighting a championship fight um, and particularly going in against a guy with, with, with the record that, that he has um, you're probably going for maybe favour to kind of underdog in that sense but sure everybody loves a good boxing underdog story so and it's still at the end of the day it's just two people going into the ring and one, one has to win yeah the blank has definitely been pulled now um, yeah definitely my first few fights I was, uh, I've been favourites you know a big favourite and I'm a uh, Obviously, the first one was just a telling one, just see, see how things go. And since then, I've been a favourite in all my fights. But yeah, it's a big change now. Uh, undefeated, super middleweight champion, stepping up, looking to become a two weight champion. But um, look, I'm here, and I even hear some interviews they're doing. You know, they're already talking to the next step after me. But look. Right, okay. I don't. I don't think they know what's coming. You know, it is a. They don't know that Kerry Man is coming, do they? <laughs> yeah, but uh, yeah, no. Look, I'm look. I'm confident. But I'm, not, I'm trying is, not to be Is that all part of the game, though? Is, I mean, boxing really is obviously it's just the physical side and the building, but a lot of it is mental as well, and it's kind of getting under people's skin, maybe, and, and kind of unnerving them in, in that sense. Is that what that is? I mean, oh God, I, I'm going. I have big plans for my thing. I'm fighting some guy down the road there from Kerry. We'll, we'll, we'll sort him, and we have bigger plans. Is that just all part of the mental game of trying to get under your skin? And you, it really, it's about keeping your cool and and you know staying focused and staying out of that world, maybe around that bubble in that sense. Yeah, look, it, it is for a lot of fighters. Um, I'm thick skin, none of that stuff, John. None of that stuff bothers me. Um, look, John, I'm not going to be, I'm not going to be barking at someone, John, when I stand in front of them. But you know, if they bite at me, I'll bite back, kind of thing, you know. Um, <laughs> but uh, look, I do, Jamie as well, John. I know Jamie. I've sparred with Jamie um, a couple of years ago. Uh, Jamie's good. Jamie, I don't, Jamie's not that type of fighter either. I don't see, I don't see that they're doing that out of spite. I think they're just, they're very confident in this fight. But I'm also very confident. But I don't look beyond the opponent. That's the opponent that's in front of me, and that that could very well be the difference between the two of us. Um, John, it, it is. I don't I, look. It, it tells for itself how good a fight this is. You know, it's a Kerry fella and a Limerick fella fighting in Belfast. John, this fight should be happening. This fight should be happening by writing the INEC or somewhere like that. You know, this it's that big a fight, and even though it's in Belfast, what's that seven hour? journey from here mm-hmm. the event is still sold out and it's mm-hmm. only sold out because of us you know yeah. we're, the, we're, the, we're the main event there That's and to sell out in Belfast what would it have done here or Limerick you know um, but look it, that, the, they're the cards we're dealt you know and that's what's in front of us yeah and of course there's a sport that there's massive interest in I, I suppose we all like to kind of jump on the back and uh, of a winner or a person that's going someplace and the whole lot but your your journey has been kind of stop start COVID kind of didn't really help you out I mean you, you, you're kind of getting momentum next thing you stopped again the whole lot so 
how excited are you that with all the, the stopping and starting that you are now here at this stage? Yeah, look, it, it grounded me a bit more, you know. I was just first two, three, or first two fights flew by within the space of two or three months, you know, it was very fast and I was on a high buzzing. Next thing got hit with a fight in Scotland that fell through and fight week and then, John, you know, it kind of set me back a bit, John, you know, and um, a couple of more fights that happened with then COVID hit and then ended up having my... Um, my third fight I'm trying, I can't, I'm trying to even picture where my third fight was <laughs> so focus on the one yeah. fight now the one. Um, sorry yeah I had my yeah, no, I can't remember where my third fight was <laughs> Luxembourg right. I think actually uh, oh, during Covid um, but yeah I was a bit more grounded then when that happened then that happened and then another few fights fell through and I kind of stopped stopped training well, not stopped training but stopped training as hard yeah. and then I got a fight last minute took it had an awful performance still got the win but you know it's it just it just helped me to realise that I've got to be on the ball the whole time, you know. And then I had my last fight in Manchester. Obviously, people were saying it was meant to be a bit of a test at Ryan Hibbert. Um, I kind of made easy work of it, and a lot of people don't even know that. It, it, if you watch the fight back, you'll probably see I probably threw five right hands in the whole thing. I was I went into that fight with a right shoulder injury, mm -hmm. which actually set me out of a fight before that. But I just wasn't pulling out of a second fight, you know, because of the shoulder you. injury, and I ended up winning that very very decisively with one arm really and um, so yeah just now so, we're here <laughs> Kevin I, I, I presume look boxing is a, a lonely sport in the sense that it's just you and your opponent and your ring and you don't have a big I suppose gang around you as such but you, you, you gather them as you go along I, I'd imagine and you probably have a few more friends going into this fight than you would have maybe at the earlier fights who has helped you along the way I mean who, who has helped you with the sparring who has organised who's the coaching who's the guy that maybe put the jacket on your back at times and the, and the all that when, when people wouldn't do it for you uh, obviously you, you, you have a small group of people like that yeah so like um, as I say when, in my amateur my my amateur days my coach was Patrick O'Brien Cash and Vale and they're in Trelino actually boxing club great boxing club he was a great coach you know to bring me as far as he did um, to be honest I, no one else would have got me that far you know he's a great coach and um couldn't what, thank what, him what enough. Made for him, what made him that great? I mean, like, I mean, oh, uh, you know, it's, it's just experience. You know, he he boxed, he boxed amateur as well. He's been there, he's done that. You know, and you just can't beat experience. Um, but when look, when I made the switch over, I was introduced to like they're two different sports. You know, I was introduced to a professional coach and Jonathan Lewins mm -hmm. in Dublin, Sally Naga in Dublin, and uh, so I went up there. We kind of went up in a trial, testing it out things were clicking everything started going good I started settling into the style and um, look that was in 2018 I'm still here with Jonathan now and Jonathan's brother as well as one of the coaches Parky Lewins and Nicky Dollard the three coaches above and um, yeah look they've, they've moulded me into something that I could have only dreamt of being a couple of years ago you know so um, how far they've brought me on is it's, it's crazy mm -hmm. um, and sparring wise look this sparring partners come and go we've had we've, I've been very lucky with sparring partners I've had some great sparring partners some that are still there some that have gone and, another and does road does the you sparring know? get fairly competitive I mean I, I know it's sparring to a sense but are, are, are you what 50-60% of a real fighter uh, or, or every, everyone's different you know I try to just I, I try not to make it too competitive I try to just pick a few things that I want to do in a spare okay. or some, a few things I want to work on and get better on and just use them in despair look you can be in with some people sometimes and you might have to bite down for a round or two and fight back just to kind of right. you know, just to just to put them under yeah. Yeah. and their pedals a bit you know if they're coming for the you corner. too much but uh, but um, yeah that's, look I'd just be looking to just learn and get tactics right in there and that's what this whole camp has been has been tall rangey opponents and working on these little these little little things that we have a game plan set for on the night you know and try to set them in to play and Look, it's it's been working. Um, Owen, Owen Corrigan has been my main sparring partner for this for this camp, and Tommy Hyde, who's over gone back to America now, fighting the weekend coming. Um, great, great high level fighter. Um, so they've been my two main sparring partners for this whole camp, and um, yeah, look, the, things couldn't have went better with sparring wise, and uh, the people I, around you, as you said, look, yeah, yeah. The, I think the people closest to you, you you'd know because like. It's it's a tough sport and there's not a lot of people that hang around it with you and the people that are still here that were there from the start they're they're they're, they're the real people backing you you know so family John family girlfriend John everything like that they're they're the main people there really and your coaches.
So the people that see you at your worst, I suppose, aren't they? Do you know. Oh yeah, and there's, 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 there's been a lot of bad days, you know. So if uh, if they've put up with me through them days, John, you know, then they're there for the they're there for the long run. And I dare say they'll all be in Belfast. Oh, they'll all be in Belfast. Yeah, yeah. Belfast are are, are you excited about it? Are you nervous about it? Are you uh, viewing it as as the next step of your journey? Where does this fight rank? Yeah, look, I'm not, I'm not nervous. I'm. <sighs> I'm not, I'm not even excited for the fight yet, you know, we're just, we still have things to do, we still have spares to get out of the way, we still have sessions to get done. I'll be excited when it comes to the weigh-ins, when me and my opponent get to face each other down after, you know, when we get off the scales. That, that's when that's when the fun begins, you know, the 24 hours working up to the fight, then from the weigh-ins, you know, it's all, as much as as much as much it sounds strange, like, that's, that's the fun bit. Mm-hmm. Look, I'm going to be human if I'm not going to get nervous before the fight. I'm gonna be rattling in my boots in the dressing room, you know. But that's what's gonna that's what's gonna fuel the fire and the fight, and that's what's gonna get the best performance out of me, you know. Well, Kevin, we wish you the very best of luck. Um, I mean, wouldn't it sound great, light heavyweight Celtic champion? Yeah, seem to be hopefully from Milltown. From Milltown, yeah. yeah not from Tralee <laughs> or Killarney or any other big towns. From Milltown. From Milltown, yeah. <laughs> Fair play. Listen, Kevin. Look, we, we've enjoyed the journey so far. I mean, to be honest with you, you, you you're still only getting going. Um, boxers have an incredible lifetime age uh, at, at various groups. I mean, your your opponent is what twenty eight or thirty? He's twenty eight. Yeah. Yeah. And what age are you? Twenty six. Oh, sure, you're close enough to him. And of course, you have sparred against him. So yeah, we shared the ring twice. Yeah. yeah. Do you send him WhatsApps? Do I send him WhatsApp? <laughs> no, no. I don't even think he has my number. <laughs> awesome. Good God. Okay. Well, he might have your number. Hopefully not your number in, in, in the literal sense, of course, on the night, but he can get your number after, maybe for a rematch or something after, yeah, yeah, after, yeah. You've, won the, <laughs> after you've won and you've done very well. Listen, Kevin, it's great to have you on. Um, we're delighted to have you here. Uh, keep up the good work. I mean, it, it's a professional boxing. It's a tough, tough game. Um, and we don't have too many at it from our own part of the world here. Uh, but you're certainly flying the flag. And look, we really hope that everything goes right for you on, on the night. We have our support. We'll be watching, uh, shouting. We won't be making the trip to Belfast. You, you told me it was seven hours. My wife wouldn't let me anywhere for seven hours because I had to come home for seven hours as well.